Parkway United Church of Christ, where through God's Spirit, we seek to listen deeply, build community, and act for justice. Somebody told me this week, no matter how many times I hear that, I can't remember it. So um, we pause to acknowledge that we worship on stolen land, stewarded by uh, indigenous folks for countless generations uh, of nations like Kiawe, Saponi, Soxapaha, Cheron, Tutelo, and probably some others. And so we worship to build courage and awareness to live in a more equitable future. Regardless of your mental health condition right now or the expression of your neurosystem, you no matter your household status, your income, your education, your racial and ethnic identity, no matter your spiritual intuitions and questions and doubts, your gender identity, your sexual orientation, whether you can call yourself Christian or not. You, you know, wh whoever you are, wherever you are along the journey of life, you, you are, are welcome here. here. So let's pause for a moment to uh, ground in our bodies. I'm going to sound, I'm going to invite the crystal singing bowl to sound, and then uh, we will just pause for a few moments. Take a breath in deeply and back out. Perhaps ground yourself with your feet on the floor. Notice the sensations in your body. Consider where you may notice a place of strength and calm and good energy. Offer gratitude for that part of your body that can ground you. And then perhaps notice a place of tightness or discomfort and take a moment to send breath and loving kindness to that tightness or that discomfort. in all of our strengths, in all of our vulnerability, in all of the places in between, we pause to be aware of the vibrant, steady love of sacred presence. We receive our prelude.
take in a little shimmering snippet of Rilke. Breathe, you invisible poem. Pure, continuous exchange with all that is flow and counterflow, where rhythmically I come to be. Rise as you're able in body and or spirit for opening song. We gather together. It's found on number 421 in the New Century Hymnal. Rejoice this morning as we gather together. everyone. Now we come to the time of celebrations and prayer concerns. I will ask that if you are online that you would type in the chat box and here in the sanctuary if you would speak out any prayer concerns or celebrations that you may have or and both. Yes right here. celebrating that Vivian has um, a schedule for surgery and she is now citizen Vivian Sundown. Let's hear a prayer request from Anne and then Michael. Thank you. 
Okay, Ann is throwing out math problems. Okay. <laughs> We are going to wish Pastor Craig and Cynthia a happy, happy 23rd anniversary. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Jim, happy birthday. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> happy 73rd birthday, Jim. <laughs> All right, Michael. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Prayer requests for all those who are experiencing and living with cancer diagnoses and their loved ones. Yes, Kay. Prayer request for Kay's ex and um, his health. Yes, Lee. Um, I'd just like to ask continued prayers for my friend Alex, who's awaiting his uh, kidneys um, transplant, and also for my coworker who had her surgery last week on the, uh, on, on the mass in her abdomen. Um, the surgery went well, so um, just ask for prayers for continued healing. Thank you for that prayer request for Lee's friend Alex and his health and per request for um, Lee's co-worker and their health as well and continued healing. Anyone else in the sanctuary before I turn to the chat? Yes, Jim. Prayers for the citizens of Kansas City and very senseless gun violence um, and gun violence, victims of gun violence around the world. Yes, Sterling. Tell me their names again. Uh, Tierney and Corey. Sterling's grateful to have his daughter, Tierney, and grandson, Corey, with him and being here for support. Just a good time. Yes, Sarah Lou. Prayers for us as we vote, choosing those with compassion and wisdom. I'll turn to the chat. <clears throat> Beth is praying, um, asking for prayer requests for a chest cold and prayer for um, Support for car repairs. Diane is asking for prayers for her sister Mary. And Peggy is asking for prayer for Linda S. And Susan T. Let us take a moment of stillness to hold these prayers and celebrations in our hearts.
Now I invite you to pray together in the language and tradition of your choice, the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thine kingdom come, thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kinship, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now we will have the passing of the peace as we stay with concerns of health and as a resilience-informed congregation. Peace unto all of you. Peace to all of you. Hey, Hello. Hey, Hello. Hey, Hello. Peace, Peace to everyone. Hey, Beth, everybody. I hope you feel better, Beth. Hey, Beth. I, hey, I, I feel better than I sound, but I figure as long as I sound like this, I oh. better stay away from other people. Uh -huh, yeah. Good morning, uh -huh. everyone. Just in case. Good morning. Hey, Good Diana. Morning. Hi, Pat. Good to see you. Mary, Jim. Hey. How you doing, yes, Diane? Peggy, I'm doing good. good. Everybody. Hi, Diane. Glad to hear it. Nice Harry, to see all of good to see everybody. Right. Hope you all are well. Harry. Uh -oh. Harry. Harry Nelson, yeah. yeah. That's Pat Child. Hey, yeah, Pat. Pat Child. Hi. Yeah, I, I have a voice. Hi. I can say hi. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's great. You must have got mine because now I lost yeah, mine. Great for to a see while. you. <laughs> great to see you. Yeah. The other people are not showing. Hey, do y'all anyway? Yeah, too. <laughs> you know, there. We know have a good week there. now. Good yep. week. Presents. Hello. Take care, everyone. Peace. Good morning. I will be reading a sacred text this morning. First one being Returning the Gift by Robin Wall Kimmerer. We are showered every day with the gifts of the earth, gifts we have neither earned nor paid for. Air to breathe, nurturing rain, black soil, berries and honeybees, the tree that became this page. A bag of rice and the exuberance of a field of goldenrod and asters at full, full bloom. Gratitude may seem like a weak tea given the desperate challenges that lie before us, but it is a powerful medicine, much more than a simple thank you. Giving thanks implies recognition not only of the gift but of the giver. When I eat an apple, my gratitude is directed to that white-armed tree whose tart offspring are now in my mouth, whose life has become my own. Gratitude is founded on the deep knowing that our very existence relies on the gifts of the beings who can, in fact, photosynthesize. Gratitude propels the recognition of the personhood of all beings 
and challenges the fallacy of human exceptionalism. The idea that we are somehow better, more deserving of the wealth and services of the earth than other species. The evolutionary advantage for cultures of gratitude is compelling. This human emotion has adaptive value because it engenders practical outcomes for sustainability. The practice of gratitude can, in a very real way, lead to the practice of self-restraint, of taking only what we need. Acknowledging the gifts that surround us creates a sense of satisfaction, a feeling of enoughness, which is an antidote to the societal messages that drill into our spirits telling us we must have more. Practicing contentment is a radical act in a consumption-driven society. I'm going to read that again. I think that's very profound. Practicing contentment is a radical act in a consumption-driven society. Now a reading from a Zen-inspired translation of Psalm 107. Gratitude to you in the goodness of your nature. Your steadfast love never ends. Thus the inspired ones speak, those whom you redeem from their suffering, whom you gathered from the many lands, from the east, from the west, from the north, and from the sea. Those who wandered restlessness in the wilderness, in the desert pathways, and could not find a settled place, hungry and thirsty, their souls grew faint. Then they cried out to you in their extremity, and you delivered them from their trials, showing them a direct pathway to a settled place. Therefore, they brim with thanks for your steadfast love and praise your words to all humankind. For you satisfy the longing soul and fill the hungry soul with goodness. You poured trouble over their heads of the powerful and caused them to wander restless in the wilderness in the desert pathways, and raised up the needy from their agony, and made their families plentiful as flocks. The upright know this pattern, and rejoice in the mouths of the heedless will be shut. The wise observe this pattern, and have confidence in your steadfast love. Good morning. Minister Michelle, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I think she was preaching, ministering to us, or praying. And she started out with this song, I Need You. And I told her that we're going to sing that soon. And so today we're going to sing that. And you know, the words are such that if everyone really engendered, these words, our community, our society would be so much better if we only understood how each and every one of us truly needed each other. And if we would say kind things, kind words would come out of our mouths, then we wouldn't be offending our brothers and our sisters. So that's what we are singing today. And please uh, join with us. Uh, they have the words up there. You see how many times we're going to sing it. And uh, it's a very simple song. And so, again, pray with us and join with us. I 
This week, as I've been meditating with the psalm, Psalm 107, and noticing this steady thread throughout the psalm of an awareness of God's steadfast love, what came to me is a, an experience I had a few years ago, sitting deep into the woods with a rock outcropping, where the water was just rhythmically dripping off the rocks into a small pool of mud, 
ringed with moss and ferns and lichen. It's kind of what God's loving kindness could be like. The steady drip, allowing things to be nourished, the ground to soften to silken goop. The small plop sending out little tiny ripples, throwing off glints of rose and, and indigo captured in the light filtered through the canopy, rippling outward, returning to everything. Loving kindness might just be like drops of fresh rainwater into our spirits, softening, making pliable casting ripples through capillaries and neural networks so we too can participate in the rhythm of loving kindness. What Vicki read from Robin Wall Kimmerer had a couple of definitions of gratitude. There are many beautiful definitions of that state of awareness. And I've been playing this week with a slightly different way of defining gratitude. Gratitude, let me try this out with you. Gratitude are moments when we remember that we don't live in isolation, that we are not alone that we are not only defined by our thoughts, we're not defined by our own making. As a sibling to awe and wonder, gratitude is a chance to remember our bigger self, our kinship self, held by a vast web of connection, which steadies us, which grounds us, which gives us a broader imagination. And you know, the thing about gratitude is it doesn't rely on the external circumstances, if you think about it. Psalm 107 functions in community as a jolt of remembrance, reminding us that in difficult times, in the past, oh, there were times when we were in a bad place and the sacred presence appeared to offer us to move to a different place, to a different set of conditions. So as we often find ourselves in times of despair, anxiety, overwhelm, fear, gratitude gives us the ground to recognize we are part of something bigger. There is a presence beyond just what we are in a condition of right now. And as Robin Wall Kimmerer stated, gratitude is, ex is an experience which prepares us for right relationship, for justice seeking, because it's subversive. It's an antidote against the way our economy inflames our cravings, inflames our neediness. Says in order for you to be okay, you, you probably need this, or you need this service, or you probably should go this place. And none of it, when you think about it, none of it actually fulfills the deepest desires of our hearts. I don't know about you, but I notice when I am really grounded in gratitude at any particular time, I crave less, I drive less, I grasp less, I pay attention to what other people have less. As Vicki read two times, practicing contentment is a radical act in a consumption-driven society. You ever think about you are part of a revolution if you pause and really soak in Thanksgiving? And so I submit to you today, there's no way we really, with all of our authenticity, can strive for voting rights or racial equity or uh, do good organizing or address mental health or climate 
justice or the violence of our society without deep grounding in gratitude. So let's go ahead and practice for a moment. Hopefully you've got a piece of fruit. You probably have done this before. Take it in your hands. If you have the gift of sight, take a really good look at it. The different textures, the colors, the brightness, the dimples, the place where the stem was attached to the branch, to the tree, with tree, with leaves, soaking in the sugars from sunlight and rain and minerals. My goodness, the whole of the earth has come together in this piece of fruit. And you might close your eyes for a second and just feel the texture, the coolness, and become present to the orange or the tangerine, a miracle in your very palm. And then go ahead, if you will, start peeling it. Notice how the skin lifts off of the membranes inside. And take note of the aroma. Traveling on oxygen molecules three feet per second through your body, arriving at your processing system that says, aha, it's the smell of orange. And now you might notice those tidy sections tucked together with such amazing symmetry, reminiscent of the symmetry of the blossom into which this fruit has come. And the network of the webbing intricately holding it in place. We've got napkins around <laughs> if you need them. I invite you to take a bite. Receive all of the dimensions of flavor and aroma as well. What memories come up for you as you take in that flavor? Or what emotions does it evoke? Just take a few moments and let that really sink in for you. Loving kindness, steadfast love, in a taste, a sacrifice so that we might have life and energy, and that energy might pass through us and back with acts of loving kindness in community. So feel free to continue to munch through the rest of the service. And in a minute, I'm going to invite you into a different practice of gratitude, clustering with a couple of people close to you in the sanctuary, or uh, I don't know if we have the capacity to do that all as, as Zoom. Because over the next five weeks of this Lenten season, we are going to explore a journey, a spiral journey, that I believe can ground us in times like these and help us strengthen the response we have individually and collectively to facing the truth of our world today. You know, we know that a lot of our society is still built on the, on the idea that if we can't just keep this economy going, keep it churning, keep it fed, that we're going to be okay, that you know, if we just get the right technological solutions, we're going to be okay. Or if we kind of sink back and really just take care of our own lives and the lives of our family members, it'll be all right. And we know all of that when we continue to do the what we have been doing, we also know that things continue to unravel, don't they? 
that civil society is fraying, that there are ecosystems collapsing everywhere, that there is ex an expansion of inequity, you notice it. I don't have to tell you all about it today. You notice it every single day, this unraveling that is happening. And, and yet, all around the edges and beneath this kind of standard flow, there are creative and resilient responses from thousands of movements and organizations across the globe seeking to create alternatives, a more life-sustaining way of being with each other and the earth, what some people call the great turning. And take a moment, what are, what are movements, what are active reasons for hope that you've been, been noticing. The labor movement. Labor movement. Youth, uh, active on the environment. More local farming is good Local farming. Native plant attention. Health care for, for veterans. More workshops available on mindfulness and meditation. Mindfulness and meditation opportunities and workshops. Co ops for health care. Co ops for health care. Co ops for health care. Native peoples asserting rights and heritage. Expanding Medicaid in North Carolina. Expansion of Medicaid in our state. And there are many, there are many, many others. Thank you for those. And we know the great turning is happening right here in our midst, right? It's worth celebrating, it's worth noticing the ways that you are built into these shifting imaginations and how we can nurture it as a community of faith, how you are shifting in little ways and big ways from business as usual. And there are a couple of ways that might, might, that might be happening. And so uh, Lisa and Marlon created a, a wedding cake for our chancel. This is the wedding cake of the great turning. So the, on the top, this does not mean one is more important than the other. They are all significant. On the top, it says holding actions. That's like feeding people, making sure people have clothing and, and shelter and making sure that they have fresh water and, and making sure that they have legal support and, and um, reaching out to our legislators and marching and petitions and campaigns against the things that we don't like, like the death penalty or torture or human trafficking, R movements for indigenous sovereignty, movements limiting domestic abuse, caring for people coming to our country without documentation. So those are holding actions. And then there are also, on the second tier, there are actions to try to transform our common life together. You know, like little models of a different kind of economy, like a food co-op or, or healthcare co-op, like was just mentioned, or agriculture that actually regenerates the soil and the ecosystem, and recognition of LGBTQ rights, and movements for restorative justice. Not just putting people in prison, but finding a way for restoration of lives and dignity, conflict transformation, ways of measuring prosperity instead of the gross domestic product. <laughs> measuring well-being and happiness and equity instead in a society. Reclaiming watersheds. Food co-ops, I think I mentioned. These are all considered 
ways to transform our common life together. So that's represented by the second tier. And the third tier is shifting our imagination and our perception and our values. And it takes time. This is the stuff that is kind of below the proverbial iceberg. You know, shifting our spiritual way of being. You know, uh, spending time immersed in the natural world really working to decolonize the way that we participate in the world. Anti-racism work, ways of addressing patriarchy and transphobia and homophobia, and listening to the wisdom of other cultures, especially indigenous cultures, and the arts, the music, the poetry, the drama, the dance, the movement that helps us feel into a new way of being. They're all important. And so as you come in through the rest of Lent, take one or two sticky notes and jot down. These are ways that I notice that I'm participating in one or more of these dimensions and put them on the wedding cake of the great turning. And we are going to lift them up. We're going to celebrate them. We're going to pray over them from now until Easter Sunday so that we acknowledge and we celebrate the ways that you are participating in the shift in our world. We're gonna move from gratitude to noticing our social location in the world, to honoring our pain, to seeing with new and ancient eyes, feeling connected to the future and to our ancestors and go forth in liberation over the course of Lent in this spiral. And then back again to gratitude. Because when we feel and honor the pain of the world, we need to come back to gratitude sometimes to move us forward. If we want an imagination to see things differently, gratitude is going to be needed to sustain us and to feed our joy. So let's take just a few moments in the bulletin, you will notice two questions. Gratitude rounds. What I appreciate, this is fill in the blank. What I appreciate, appreciate about living in this time of global crisis is, what do you appreciate in the spite of everything that's hard? What are you still excited about, interested in, compelled to be a part of? What I appreciate about living in this time. And then, as I look at my life, I'm taking part in the transformation of the world in this way. Just one way. I mean, you might probably list a dozen, but we'll have time for just one. And grab somebody near you and just have a short conversation in response to these questions. All right. <laughs>
So I know folks, uh, you've just scratched the surface, but you might want to want to make a commitment to whoever you talk to to set aside some time to continue this conversation with them, uh, to deepen your relationship with them. And thank you for your willingness to try that. We're going to keep moving, uh, and I'm going to call for Stephanie and um, her contingent as she uh, engages with us in the ritual of new membership. Hey, right here. Yeah, come on up. Yes, Stephanie's found um, a sense of spiritual community in the midst of Parkway United Church of Christ and is discerned in the spirit. It's time for her to affirm her baptism and be in relationship with us in a formal way. So I ask you, Stephanie, in accordance with the sacred story we claim as the church, do you seek to continue to love God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your capacity? And do you seek to love your neighbor as yourself? If so, say, I do. I do. And do you commit yourself to this community, to share our joys and our concerns, and, and to work together in spiritual growth, love, justice, and peace? If so, say, I do. We all also always make a commitment, so I invite you to join me in what's printed in our bulletin today. We praise you for calling us together as the church. We are grateful for those who gather to make up this local church and for calling us into covenant with Stephanie. Together, may we live in the spirit, building one another up in love and sharing in worship and service. Amen. So, who's going to introduce? Both of us. Both of us. And just very briefly, I am amazed how there is such synchronicity between what has been said today and in Stephanie's journey here. The how of which is, is very simple. And I start out, this sounds somewhat incongruous, but bear with me. Um, Jim and I joined Working America in 2012. We met Craig at many social justice events. In 2017, Stephanie came in as the organizer for the Greensboro, Winston-Salem area of Working America. She also met Pastor Craig at many of these events. And here we are again in 2024. And last year, Stephanie said to me, you know, I, I know you guys are going to church. Have you thought about a church? And I said, well, you know someone who is a pastor of a church. Why don't you come to Parkway? Because we know all are welcome here. And here we are right now today. So I will turn this over to Jim. Well, there went half of my speech. <laughs> she led us on several acti activists. Oh, okay. Wait a minute, I got to take this out. It was loud enough for me in this. <laughs> anyway, she led us on several activist trips. She led us on several activist trips to Raleigh to fight for the minimum wage of $15, several city council meetings, set up a booth at Goodwill in South Winston-Salem, as well as getting people to sign a petition for minimum wage at the bus station in downtown Winston-Salem. We also fought for Medicaid expansion and two trips for, to Raleigh and supported voter registration in 2018. She, she is a proud parent of two teenagers. God bless her. 
she she is funny, friendly, gregarious. We think she will be a welcome asset to our community. Miss Stephanie McDonald. Welcome, <laughs> and thank you, Chairman Ann. Take a moment to check in with Stephanie and share your delight in her being officially a member of Parkway. Thanks for coming up. Thank you, Vicki. I recently, last week, had to attend another church. I was not able to join our annual Mardi Gras, which disappointed me greatly, but my grandson does take precedent. And it was Scout Sunday, and as a 13-year-old who claims to be agnostic, he had to read the prayer of confession, which just <laughs> thrilled me no, to no end. But he was brilliant. He handled the microphone and presented himself very well, and um, I was very, very proud of him. Um, you mentioned this morning, Jim, you used the word asset. Indeed, we are all assets to this church. Each of you in some way contribute. Some of you may only be able to do it financially, and that is okay. That is okay. Because we all have changed. I can't do the things that I did 15 years ago when I came here. But each of us gives according to your ability to give. It's not a certain percentage. I got so sick in my younger life of always hearing 10%, 10%, 10%. Some, for, for some people, 10% may be too much. So for some people, it may not be enough. You give because you believe in the mission of this church and in what, who we are and what we do. Our biggest asset, of course, is this building. And actually, I, it is our building. However, our most lovable asset is our minister and our staff. Give as you are able, and don't worry about the, the numbers in between. So uh, not everybody has met uh, somebody who is essential to make things happen here. Uh, Ann Kraft is with us today. She's our office administrator. I'm going to invite her forward. So, so not only is this an opportunity for us just to acknowledge our gratitude for what you do every week, and but she's got a message for us. Thank you. Have you got a slide to put up for me so the congregation can see that? I'd really appreciate it. Let me get out of your way if you can see better. I want to see hands. Who's on Facebook? Oh my gosh, really? Why haven't I seen y'all on Facebook? <laughs> I run the Facebook page for Parkway. I don't see many of you there. Who's on Instagram? I haven't seen y'all there either. <laughs> I run Instagram as well. Craig checks in when he can. I think a couple others do. Um, we love your presence on both social media platforms. You don't have to get into the drama that Facebook can bring into your life. You can set a timer. You can say, I'm out of here in five minutes. Every week, your sermons are posted on Facebook, and you can tune in through YouTube as well. They're uploaded every week. You can view them. You can pass them to your friends, to your family. If you had a special part, if you sang, you wanted your friends to see it, share it. Share it on Facebook. Hey, guys, I'm a part of this wonderful church. Let me share it with you. Are you looking for a church home? Let me show you mine. It's the simplest way 
to get the word out about your church, about your people. And talking about contributions, this is contributing to your church and your community. There are so many people that need support systems, whether it's in the church, within your groups, the circles that you have. People need that. People grow from that. And your church is growing. Keep it growing. If you need help, we have an upcoming social media workshop, April 14th, Sunday after church. It's a Sunday. We'll bring something for food if that'll get you there, whatever gets you there. It's going to be very basic. If you are confused, if it scares you to be on Facebook, if you do not know how to like, it's that simple. That magenta arrow, go like it. Just click on it. It takes one second of your time. Share the white arrow. That will share it to your page, or you can share it as a reel for all your friends to see. And there you go. Oh, my gosh. They keep talking about this, this church. That one share may get 10 people here. You just don't know. Social media works wildly. Be a part. You're a wild group of people of, good, of goodness. So share it. Keep sharing it. But also, out in the community, because they need you. They need you. If you have questions about Social Media Workshop, let us know. Craig, me, Margaret. The funny thing about this post is we had a social team meeting this week. Sterling was there, Margaret, me, and Craig. I said, I can't get people to like our posts. What's wrong? All of a sudden, this post now has 19 likes. It's the most likes we've had in forever. <laughs> so I'm depending on y'all. We have one that said, their pastor is one heck of a guy. We have Margaret. She said, Parkway's been my home for almost 23 years. It makes me smile, challenges my thinking, and makes me a better person. Lisa with Sean. I love the community at Parkway and the freedom to grow in faith and hope. Carol Holt. Always loved Parkway and the people there. Moved to Raleigh and was fortunate to find a like-minded church. Still care about our PUCC friends. Get on social media. You don't have to get in the drama. But be a part of your church. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anne. Just a couple of things to keep in mind. Wild Ones is doing a, a presentation about stream restoration in our fellowship hall at 1 today. Tuesday at 11, Piedmont Environmental Alliance is offering a workshop on opportunities to take advantage locally of the uh, Inflation Reduction Act. This Thursday online, our five-part uh, Springtime of the Soul series begins. Sign up on the clipboard in the narthex. On Saturday, still looking for folks who wanting to, to be a part of what we talked about today, uh, taking on a, a being of the world and speaking from that perspective. We'll have mask making, we'll be outside, we'll be indoors. It starts at nine o'clock this Saturday. And then, um, we're looking for people to bring packaged snacks to share in the primary on March the 5th. So bring crackers or cookies or a healthy snack that's in a package, and we will share them with voters. The invitation is always open with every breath and each encounter to sink into awareness of presence, mystery, and connection. You may sit in your place and sing or listen or meditate or even look out the window. You may come and receive the bread of life or 
the cup of peace. You may come to light a candle to enliven your prayers. You are invited to come and feel the warmth of the oil so as to be a sign of the healing presence of God. Pray with me. We give thanks for the story of Jesus who stopped along the way to notice the power of grace within every human on the land and through in which he traveled. We pause giving thanks for him and his friends at this feast of freedom where he acknowledged sunlight and rain and mineral and stories of the ancestors as he blessed bread and they ate together. We recognize that he acknowledged the alchemy of acid and sugar and the ancient symbol of a cup poured out as the blessing and drank together. We too acknowledge the wonder of olive oil and the work of bees ex that create wax and the power of our bodies receiving and the creativity of fires we light. In your holy name. Amen. Amen. Now we bless this wine and juice and this bread, these candles and this oil with the already present spirit, the sacred one, all these gifts so that we can be gifts to others. Amen. Amen. Please come forward as you would like.
75 in the new century hymnal. Lord, make me more holy. by the power of the one who continues to create and the one who continues to bring things back together and the one who fills us with the capacity for love. Go in a just peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.